Yeah, this will tell us. And that's pretty conclusive. Still going. Close. Oh, wow. I think he got it down. How strong is he? Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us on the Pick and Go podcast once again. Uh, Another huge weekend of rugby to break down and dissect and do all sorts of other stuff too. Uh, the, the king of dissection here on the podcast, Paul Moati. How are you, Paul? Uh, very good, thank you. Um, yeah, it was great to have the NPC back. How good? Oh, amazing. You were just telling me uh, how you barely left the couch all weekend. You are watching it all out. I, uh, I was pretty much the same. It was great to, yeah, Sunday afternoon in particular on the couch, uh, having those two really entertaining games to watch. So, no, thoroughly enjoyed it all. Another man who would be up and about after Otago got a... One of the arrivals on Saturday, Arvo. Carl, how, how was your weekend? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, like you say, plenty of rugby. Targo got away uh, at the death there. Very lucky to get that win. It's always a, a big match, that Southern Derby. Always it is. Big... It is. Um, yeah, I, I thought uh, Southland had it for a little bit there. Well, they did. They, they did. They, <laughs> they certainly they, did. Um, yeah, Targo got away with it and uh, get the four points. Mm, yeah, that they had it and then they didn't. You know, that's uh, quite often the story. But that's, yeah. Yeah, as tempting as it is to go straight into Bunnings NPC, I think we'd all uh, pretty heavily talk about provincial footy for the next 45 minutes. But probably should uh, touch on Blenders Low 1 uh, up at Eden Park. The All Blacks, I, I, I would say, pretty comfortably walking away with uh, one hand on the Blenders Low Cup after Saturday night's performance. Uh, I don't know about how you two are feeling. Were you ever nervous about the result at all, Paul? No, they, um, they got out to such a huge mm. lead. Um, that even though the Australians came back and scored, what, the last three tries, mm. uh, they still were no chance of actually overhauling the All Blacks, perhaps. If someone had their kicking boots on, uh, it may have been a different story. Um, I'm sure they've worked on that over the week. Uh, but the Australians never gave up, uh, which was good to see. Um, I think if you're an All Black supporter, you'd be you'd be okay with the performance. Um it wasn't a stellar performance. They didn't put the foot down They, when they had the opportunity to just absolutely uh, wipe the Australians. So I think it was it was pretty much it was a shared that they shared the royalties from the game, I would say, even though the All Blacks came away with the win, which is the most important thing. I think, uh, yeah, it was 50-50. Right. Were you, uh, was it the same on your scorecard, Carl? Were you giving some credit to the Australians? Uh, definitely the last 10 minutes there to, to score those three tries like they did. Um, yeah, not, not happy from a betting point of view, to be honest. Yeah, the uh, the 21 to 30 mm. was looking like a lock uh, when when Australia scored that first try. Anyway, you know, 20 mm. points. Oh, yeah, sweet. All Blacks will score another one. We're home here. Bang, bang, it's all over. Um, I thought the All Blacks started pretty slow. Um they weren't doing a lot with the ball mm. early. Took them a little while to get into it. But when they got into it, they looked looked pretty good. Um, some of the strike weapons they've got there, eh? It's just, it's yeah, it's fun to watch. Yeah, started slow and finished poorly. I think. Well, I don't know about poorly, but Australia definitely finished hot. Yeah, which, um, pretty yeah. much wasn't until Australia scored that try after line out to Callaway right at the end of the first half that it seemed the All Blacks really yeah. switched on. What so, a try, too. Yeah, no, what it was a try. Mm. Great little move there, came off perfectly. Um, but yeah, even, even the no try. Oh, that what, that's the great tragedy of Saturday night, right? That's going to be lost to the, the. It's not going to be one of those tries that's revisited for fifty years time. That was yeah, great, great little moment there. But yeah, unfortunately, I think there was probably two forward passes in the build up, so <laughs> didn't uh, yeah. Couldn't, that, they cancel each other out. Yeah, surely. yeah, surely. <laughs> I reckon you, you get one forward pass for every forty meters you travel. So given that try went about ninety four meters yeah. along the ground, it's probably it looks like we're heading into a sort of a rugby AFL hybrid game here. <laughs> I'd, I'd be all for it. Yeah, no, nah, that was uh, yeah, but it was about probably what between 25 to 30 good minutes of rugby from the All Blacks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To me, yeah. it seemed like maybe the game plan early on was they knew they had the depth and the strength in the forward, so they didn't want to get too expensive and sort of made a point of wearing down the Aussies. And we did see um, some gaps open up around the fringes of the right, which Aaron Smith uh, took very good advantage of later on in the mm. game. So I don't, I don't know if that was a game plan or maybe they, just, they didn't have quite the. Uh, 
the connections firing out wide that they have in previous years. There were a few times I thought maybe, especially off sort of maybe second phase balls or you, you had the forward pod set up and they could have gone back door to a back. They chose to maybe hang on the, to the ball and carry and when in past years or when they had a bit more continuity, they might have uh, flung, chose to flank it wide earlier on. But yeah, it'll be remains to be seen if they do that on Saturday night. Now they've got another test under their belts. Was there any uh, other red flags that you picked up on, Paul, that you think maybe... Dave Rennie would have circled and said, well, could, could get something out of this? Uh, I think certainly keeping the game uh, up at a fast pace. Mm. Uh, I really thought when they uh, kept the ball moving, uh, kept possession, um, they really um, started to find cracks in that uh, All Blacks defence. So uh, I'd certainly be working on uh, as many sort of uh, combinations or schemes uh, to keep the ball in play and keep the moving the uh, all-black team around. So, yeah, I thought um, that their reserves came on and made quite a bit of a difference. Uh, the Tom and Thor's got to get a start, doesn't this, it? Yeah, well, no, is, it is, is his best position coming off the bench when everyone's getting tired? Oh, bring him on earlier. He's been pretty impressive when he started test matches as well, to be fair. I don't yeah. know if that is, is it a scrummaging thing. Like, he's done a lot of damage and scrums and tests as well, but I don't know if maybe... Rooney doesn't want him matched up against the All Black, but yeah, you think if anyone, George Bauer would be maybe the the one player in that All Black starting fifteen you could target. So mm. um, yeah, I, I guess it's, it does seem to be kind of working. But yeah, you would probably like to see him out on the park for fifty minutes or so. Yeah, so I take it you're Definitely. on the same page there, Carl. Big, big fan of his work. Mm. Were there any other uh, areas of concern around the All Blacks game for you? Or? Nah, well, the this the, the slowness, the mm. continuity. Um, I think we'll we'll see a completely different All Blacks team in terms of not the team itself, but the way they play and the way they start and probably the, the end result this weekend. Um, yeah. But like I said at the top of the show, Paul, <coughs> the concern for the Australians, the kicking uh, off, the, off the tee. For I think uh, my mate Quaid would have. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> he, he wouldn't have missed. He would because he probably would have been on the sideline for 10 to 20 minutes uh, cooling his feet for some indiscretion. I think he would have had an arty severe-shaped bruise on his sternum that he'd been nursing <laughs> as the All Blacks sort of carried on marching down the pitch. Yeah, That would have been the biggest issue. But, um, you know, we should probably give out a bit more credit as well. It was, a, you know, every every Blenders Low Test is one is something we celebrated as a man who grew up in the 98-2002 uh, era where we didn't – didn't have our hands on it. Who was uh, your man of the match for the All Blacks if you had to pick one? Or who? What were the big standouts for you, Carl? Oh, wow. Put me on the spot <laughs> Sorry, here. I realised I haven't worded that quite how I did in the run sheet. So, <laughs> you know, uh, oh, not, not man of the match, but I was impressed with Rico on the wing again. Mm -hmm. Got himself in the game when he when he wanted and just looked looked good with a bit of width and a bit of space and yeah, disappointing to, to see where he is this week, but we'll get into we'll that get shortly. Um, oh, I don't know. Fair enough. How about you, Paul? Was what were your sort of who, who got man of the match? Yeah, I thought Aaron Smith. Yeah, I uh, thought I was giving you a good. layup there. He, yeah. he was. He was. Good. I thought he had yeah. a huge game, mm -hmm. and, and it was a huge game from uh, statistically, of course, uh, being a one uh, hundredth uh, test for the All Blacks. Sure was. So. Yeah. He did stand out to me. He, um, the sort of combination that he had between the forwards and the backs was um, very, very good. He was involved in a number of those long uh, range tries slash no tries. Uh, Both the tries the All Blacks scored sort of from considered pressure. He was the one who correct. noticed the gap, especially that second one that Damo scored in the corner. Mm. Was, you could hear him screaming, blindside, 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 before he scored it. So, very, yeah. very quick delivery from the ruck too. Oh, yeah. So good. <clears throat> Uh, so, yeah, I don't think I, you need to look any further. I mean, you could maybe point your finger at Marty Severe as well, who I thought was uh, very busy, as he always is. I guess when when you play the game at such a consistently high level, um, sometimes you can, can forget it about a player like Artie. Um, or Aaron. Or Aaron, mm. yeah. So, yeah. Aaron Smith for mine. Yeah. Artie Severa and Aaron Smith good at rugby. That's uh, the sort of How good. searing analysis you yes. get on the Pick and Go podcast. No, I was, uh, yeah, I have to say Artie was back to his uh, dynamic best. For a man who had so many injuries during the Super Rugby season, he's 
for second. Wouldn't know it. Incredibly no. low. Yeah. And uh, uh, how about on the other side of the ball, though? Australia obviously probably formed better than certainly the bookies thought thought to get um, with an eight of the All Blacks, even if a lot of that did come in garbage time. Was there anything that stood out about their performance to you, Carl? Probably the fact that they did play right up until garbage mm. time. Normally, or well, we've we've come to see in the part in the the recent past when they're out of it, they sort of put their heads down and don't don't fight until the end. Mm. Um, yeah, that's probably that'd be a big positive for them, I think, and something they'll build on. Uh, heading into this week, they've, you know, essentially 20, 21 nil up in the last <laughs> last ten minutes of play or whatever it is. And especially when you look back on the France series as well, there was the first test where you know they were dead and buried. All France had to do was uh, mm. complete a set piece, and they still managed to yep. hustle and steal that. And then the third, you get a bloke sent off in the fifth minute of a national. It's on. very easy yep. to put your heads down and let a quality side like France run away with it. But Dave Rennie certainly does seem to have instilled that fighting quality amongst the Australians that maybe wasn't there in the Czech era mm. where they were a bit more individualistic, shall we say. Um, I don't know. what. Uh, how about you, Paul? Where did the Wallabies impress you? Well, I thought the bench. Mm. I thought they really picked it up when they introduced those uh, uh, bench players. Uh, Daniela, of course. Uh, I thought the boy Jordan was uh, very, very good uh, as well late in the game. So, yeah, I, I thought they really got a lot of sort of energy uh, when those players came on. So I, I think there's certainly, there's certainly a number of positives for them to take out of that game. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't know. Have they got a kick of this? Yeah, well, for, a, for a team who historically has had very, very good uh, kickers, um, it was... It was a wee bit of a shock to see, although... It's tough conditions, to be fair to him. Like, I know Richie still kicked very well, but to see Aiden Park's not an area where you usually see someone having to be down on their knees holding the ball in place for kick it. Like, the wind was obviously an issue. Yeah, well, it was an issue for both guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously, when you've played a few more times at Aiden Park, um, it certainly helps. So uh, perhaps the young fella, uh, what's his name, Noah? Noah Lolasia. He'll, uh, he'll have had a bit of practice over the week and uh, be ready to go. This time. Well, he's had a look at the park. Stuck, stuck him in a wind tunnel for four days. Not, not the first time he's missed a crucial kick this season either. But, uh, yeah. Someone's talking the through their wallet there. Crusaders and Altero. Yeah, no, but breaking news on the podcast. We, one minute ago, the Wallabies did name their team and uh, they've stuck with the same halves combination and McDermott and Lola Seo, probably the big, and is obviously Mariki Korobiti, who returns from a big plus a stand down or a suspension. Yeah. And then Andrew Callaway holds his place on the other wing after a pretty impressive performance. Mm. Obviously got the first try. Um, Tony Alatupo back on the bench. So we'll, we'll probably see him making another impact later on in the game. And interesting, well, I suppose, Jordan Pattaya loses his spot. I, I would have thought just a man with that sort of talent, you'd want him in the team. But, mm. you know. I guess he wasn't super involved, especially compared to Callaway on Saturday night. So that, uh, but n not too many changes from the Wallabies and uh, the All Blacks also pretty much uh, standing pat. Paul, uh, just the one new face in the starting 15, a couple of positional rejigs in the back line with, uh, it sounds like Anton Brown's picked up a bit of a niggle, so he's not available for selection. How are you feeling about seeing Will Jordan back in the starting 15? Oh, I think it's fantastic. Um, I think, and I know we've got an abundance of riches in the three quarters, uh, but but I think you you've got to find a place for him somewhere in that twenty three more times than not. Um, he's he is just that sort of player who is the right man at the right time in the right place. Mm. Uh, and just some people are like that. He's a game breaker. Um, yeah, he'd he'd trip over crossing the street and pick up a, a million dollar winning lotto ticket. <laughs> it's, that's the sort of guy he is. So um, I, I think you have to find a place for him uh, somewhere. Glad I'm glad to see him starting. Um, not so happy about what's happened because he's starting. Was that in the 13 jersey? Indeed. Mm, I thought yeah. we found uh, we found his position last week, didn't yeah. we? I think this is just cut the starting to highlight the, the, the lack of depth the Blacks really do have in midfield at the moment, right? Lena Brown picks up a little where's, niggle. Where's Tupai? Yeah. I know, he was playing for Waikato. Yeah, that would be. But are you going to chuck him in against the Wallabies at Eden Park? Why not? Yeah. So you, you would have gone that way, I take yeah. it? Yeah. Mm. Where's Nani Lovemonte? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'll move on. Sorry. <laughs> Don't give me an excuse to talk about Man or Two too quickly, Paul. Should we, we do another little cross-post uh, podcast chat here? We were talking about um, Joey Manu yesterday on the, the Advantage line. Yeah. 
Would Ask, he fit, asking where he would fit in. Could he slot in? He's been playing pretty much every position in the rest of the yeah, He has, yeah. yeah. yeah, Or another um, form, well, man who's won St. Eric's jersey plenty of times, who's currently SBW? running around in Auckland. No. Or, him uh, too. RTS. Yeah. RTS uh, might be getting a call up for the midfield sooner than... Crocky has, <laughs> hasn't put an Auckland jersey on. We're putting him in the black one straight away. I mean, they're paying him enough, I imagine. You know, that's uh, where he's going to end up sooner rather than later, no matter what. Anyway. Would they pay Joey Manu a decent pack, packet? Would they? I would imagine. I mean, if they've been watching what he's been doing for the Roosters the last few weeks. Yeah, no, I, I, I do wonder, just with the lack of depth, whether the Auckland coaches are getting a, have had a call from Foz in the last couple of weeks and say, maybe, uh, I know you want to start him on the wing, but maybe, maybe uh, we'll see how he goes <laughs> in the midfield. We know the All Blacks coaches haven't been shy about suggesting where players should yeah. play for provincial teams in the past. Uh, and he's Braden Enor. Is he, oh, uh, named, another one, yeah. is he uh, named in the NPC side? Well, they haven't named the team just yet. It's tough, you know, coming back from Pindasada straight against that rampant Mount or two back line, but maybe they're, they're going to have to chuck him in. Not at the boneyard this time, No, though. no, that is true, yeah. Uh, Artie is my head to play in the midfield mm. for Auckland. Uh, you struggle to get a wing spot. The way, the way their wing is playing. was playing there. on Saturday afternoon, but yeah. <laughs> Um, don't want to get. To, we're very keen to talk Sorry. about Buddy's NPC here, though. Sorry, it seems Patrick. Like, Sorry, Patrick. No, no, it's take uh, control of it. It's of, my of fault. Yeah, that, that's the bigger issue than me having to sort of rest any sort of control <laughs> of something. But uh, like we said, it's a pretty similar team for the All Blacks. I'm guessing that to me, this makes it seem like Ian Foster's almost decided on a first choice fifteen. And this, aside from you know one or two injury issues with Sam Kane and Leonard Brown being the two obvious ones. Seems like this is going to pretty much resemble the team he wants to put out on the park when he's got everyone available. Would you be in agreement with that, Paul? Yeah, yeah, pretty much so. Um, yeah, I, look, I can't argue with that. Uh, I just, I, I thought we found a position for Rico last weekend. <laughs> I thought we did. To be fair, Sever Reese was really impressive on the left wing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, he didn't look out I, of place. It's more the yeah the thirteen jersey and the eleven jersey that's the issue in this. But yeah, like you say, Leonard Brown's healthy. He's yeah. first choice in that midfield, and it's one other. So hopefully, him and Braden Enor as well can get back to full fitness sooner rather than later before the uh, Springboks come to town, at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, so similar team. Are you expecting a similar game plan on Saturday? Carl, you sort of alluded to before. You may, maybe think the Blacks will chuck the ball around a bit more. This, this I game. think so. Um, maybe the the first test was you know feeling the Aussies out a little bit, seeing what they can and can't do. Um, yeah, they. Uh, oh, I think you got to get. I feel like the uh, Foster kept, you know, some of the game-breaking substitutes on the bench for too long. Uh, Bodie only got what, fifteen minutes, ten, yeah, twelve minutes. It wasn't a lot. You're up there. No, that's right. You'd think you'd want to. He's had hardly any rugby. Yeah, basically. get him on. Um, yeah, I. Th like I say the team. It's a solid team. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's it's such a good team. Um, yeah, it's going to be. I, I just think, like I say, the All Blacks have done their homework as such on on the Wallabies last week, and we might see them uh, not give up three late tries and mm. perhaps win by that. Yeah, no, twenty-one to thirty margin or, or something similar. It's certainly pretty hard to pick nets in the whole thing. My uh, my only concern would be if I had to back one of these these two coaching staffs or head coaches to maybe you know come up with a, a different game plan or expand on what they did in week one I'm, I'm sure Dave Rennie's probably mm. the man to whip, whip up something and he, he might have something extra in his back pocket I don't know if the Wallabies quite threw everything on the table on Saturday night what do you think we might see different from the Wallabies Paul I'm not sure but he mm. certainly will have uh, an extended whiteboard session mm. I'm sure um, and they'll come out with a few new things and I'm sure it, it won't be his full uh, deck of cards either he'll leave a few tricks in the pack um and he'll just keep sort of chipping away at the all blacks and, and finding weaknesses where he can uh, and he'll go back and review that and then come uh was it 2023 uh i think he'll be ready to uh launch so yeah i, I certainly expect to see a few things uh different from the australians on saturday night um and it, i i just think they're just not gonna. They're not gonna do everything. They're not gonna go overboard. So, um, what's the line? Is it a similar line? To yeah, a, it's twenty-two, 22 and a half. So that's about where the betting got up to prior to game just, one, just before kickoff. Yeah, and I would. It's yeah, open about the same. It's hovered in that low twenties all week, really. 
because you have to say, looking back at the history of this, the Blenders Look Cup in the last few years, it tends to be the first game is pretty close. And then... The second game is not so close, although obviously the first game has pretty rarely been at Eden Park. So I don't know whether that... I'm tempted to take the plus 22 and a half. Mm. Uh, I'd be leaning that way, just looking at the weather as well. We are now hashtag uh, pick and go weather watch, fan favourite segment. Um, isolated showers possible in the afternoon and evening at Eden Park with uh, some pretty decent southwesterlies. So if the conditions aren't 100%, hmm. mm, I'd probably be leaning that way. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, the 22. It, yeah. Um, I'm a bit worried I'm overcorrecting because I was sitting here saying last week, look, you're going to be a very nervous man backing a, backing a plus, and then here comes Bodie and Geordie off the bench for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I don't know. So you sound, sound like you're leaning the way the plus, Paul. I am. How about you, Carl? Oh, I've actually s- steered clear of this game almost completely when we come to our betting later on. <laughs> Just. <laughs> but if you had to. If I had to, oh, I'll take the minus. Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, I think, um, I think the ABs will find another gear this week. Kick on. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, I've also got a much larger number in my bidding <laughs> later on but just in terms of pure plus or minus play yeah it's it's probably probably a stay away um not that that's what we want to be saying on a uh, betting podcast but we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to some betting shortly before, you, you guys <laughs> definitely have a crack we'll stay away yeah. but before we before we do that um touch on the other game in the rugby championship this weekend south africa strips uh you know no, no rest for the wicked straight off that well there is a bit of risk rest yeah for, for most that's for, what i was just about to say it's a very different looking springbok team that's going to be lining up in port elizabeth on sunday morning to take on the argentinians bookies still got them pretty clear favorites they're nine and a half points uh nine and a half point favorites at time mm-hmm. recording although that number is getting smaller it might may or may not have been 12 and a half earlier the week i couldn't possibly comment on that um <laughs> yeah and were you do you think it's positive for the spring box backing up so quickly from the line series or uh, like... yes okay yes i do mm-hmm. um and, and i agree with uh all of the changes they've made uh, that was a tough three test match series against mm-hmm. the lions uh in back to back to back weeks uh so they were, they would have gained a lot uh, from that, I'm sure Razi Erasmus has had a look at things and we're probably going to see a few social media posts pointing out the um, the laws of rugby that the uh, Argentinians push. Yeah, Pablo Matera could be heavily featured in one of those videos. Indeed, sure. <laughs> indeed. Uh, but I think them coming off that uh, straight away uh, and then making the changes they've made works in their favour big time. I really like the what the uh, Springboks have done. And I think they're a big, big chance of actually taking the rugby championship oh. out. Don't jump ahead. We'll, oh, we'll okay. Shortly, yeah. <laughs> I need, need to get Carl's thoughts on this game first. Uh, are you also pretty keen on the Springboks? And yeah, stuff? well, it, probably more so out of, I haven't seen a, a ball kicked or, or passed by Argentina for... It wasn't that long ago we were making a lot of cash backing them as underdogs against Wales. Yeah, but I didn't watch that, yeah, any true. of those games. Mm. I just, just backed them. Yeah. Um, and then Wales probably aren't a great yardstick. No, that yeah. um, minus their lines. Mm. Yeah, I mean yeah, South yeah. Africa also minus. You know, a fair few. Yeah, they've still there. got looking at those. Mm. You know, they've still got some decent names there. Mm. Um, some decent names that have played a lot of Test rugby too. So, yeah, I, I'll be all South Africans this week for sure. Yeah, I, I'm the other side. I just. No, the rotation policy alone, like ignoring that, they just you can't help but have a bit of a mental letdown. There was so much mental energy from the Springboks that went into that series against the Lions, not only in the uh, social media or video editing department, but they were obviously three very physical, very it was a pretty heated series. Like there's naturally going to be a thing, a bit of a letdown. Then you just look at all the names they've left out this week. Like it's it's not the same World Cup winning Lions winning side, and whereas Argentina, you know, like. Wales minus the Lions, not a great yardstick for the Springboks, but that you know that was nearly the grand final. They've, they've yeah. been building to this game, so I think you know Argentina. We saw last year, um, very much speaking from experience, not a team you can sleepwalk into a game against. Yeah, I, I just don't think you can be resting ten or twelve first choice players and expect to walk all over Argentina, especially with the way the, spirits, the South Africans are likely going to play. You got Francois stay in the midfield, who's just going to be putting up bombs all day, right? I'm loving like, it. There, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's probably not a South African team that's designed to. Put, put a lot of points up, yeah, especially without the likes of Colby and Pimpy and the Kanyo arm, who are probably three of their most dangerous weapons. So I can um, kick important goals, that guy. 
which one of those? Francois, he, he can, yeah. He can. I mean, uh, he can kick three goals and they can win by nine points, and I'll be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's uh, yeah. So I, I think the Argentinians, uh, yeah, I think it'll be a pretty close game. Obviously, Springboks not their best, but that does uh, bring me to. I was very surprised to see South Africa three dollar fifty in the rugby championship outright market when I had a little peep at that. Lovely value. Yeah, I take it you're on the same page as me. Indeed, Paul. Yeah. yeah. Carl, how? Uh, how, how do you think it? New Zealand dollar fifty seven? I thought very short. Yeah, ask me again after this week. After how the, the All Blacks go, prices might have changed. They, yeah, they would certainly have changed. Yeah, they would have changed, but mm. yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll take the value mm. South Africa oh, at the yeah. moment. But if, uh, yeah, if, if the All Blacks can put in a performance like I think they can, then the dollar fifty seven uh, is probably free uh, at this point. I think. Bar, barring the depth in the midfield, which we've discussed already, the the depth overall as a squad for the ABs is incredible. Uh, yeah, I don't, do we know yet where the next lot of games are going to be played? The, the, I think it looks we, like they're all going to be in Australia, right? Like that still says TBA for the New Zealand versus Argentina games, and they're holding out hope that the Springboks can get into New Zealand for the games between the mm. New Zealand and the Springboks. But I'd. Uh, so the Springboks can, but two NRL teams who've oh. basically been in a bubble for two months now can't. Yeah, like we're not, uh, not going right. to get into the COVID and go podcast. Do you think Jacinda listens to this podcast, uh, Paul? We know she doesn't listen to their she don't, No, no, she yeah. doesn't listen to this one either, unfortunately. Maybe the cut line. <laughs> Maybe she's a golf fan. <laughs> right. I feel like my job as a host to very much steer us away from these uh, <laughs> choppy waters, but yeah, I'd, Obviously, the issue for the Springboks are, with the price would be they're going to be away from home for that whole time. But yeah. I'd imagine the, the All Blacks are going to be from next week as well. I'd be very surprised to see any of these tests played outside of Australia. So, for me, yeah. Yeah. I'd uh, have a little nibble on the 330. You'll be able to, the 350, you'll probably be able to lay off uh, later in the, the series when the Springboks and All Blacks finally do face off against each other. But the Springboks will be very much back to full strength and they'll even have the likes of Dwayne Newland left back in the lineup by then. So, yeah, should be should be interesting. I'm very uh, obviously very much looking forward to those uh, games. The All Blacks finally facing off against the World Champions for the first time, and it'll be over two years by mm. by that stage. So, yeah. But uh, before then, something I'm even more into- excited to talk about: mm. Bunnings NPC. Yeah, how good! Uh, you would have been up and about at about three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, Paul. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, you're talking about Wellington. No, Eastbourne, uh, big win. No, obviously Wellington put up a huge score on Northland. And they looked uh, mm-hmm. impressive doing it too. Uh, Suffolk couldn't get over the line though. No, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, it was one of the few players who didn't. Uh, I was like, you kept, when I pulled out my phone and saw what the score was, you could have given me any price and not the score <laughs> I would have taken it. Yeah. You, would have, you would have taken him scoring two. Oh, yeah, easy. You, yeah. Would, have, you would have seen who scored in the, the Hawks Bay game though, Paul. Oh, here we go. Your man Ash Dixon. Ash Dixon. Yeah. Mm. But we're uh, were the Lions the most impressive team to you in week one? I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they look very very good. Uh, obviously, having a couple of All Blacks slide into the squad mm. really makes a difference. Um, and I think the fact that TJ uh, was there made love uh, gave him that freedom. You'll find out this week because mm. TJ's not yeah. there. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. But he would have gained a lot from that. Yeah, Even just having TJ in camp, like mm. obviously, yeah, I think that he he's very vocal and you know very keen to help out all the younger guys and and around training and everything like that. So would have, uh, yeah, I'm sure he's imparting a lot of wisdom on to the likes of Ruben and uh, Aiden Morgan and whoever else the, the Lions have in their hubs. Well, he played a few games in the right. ten jersey for North this season. I think so. he played every position <laughs> in the line for North at one stage or another. Uh, maybe he was trying to play fifteen for the Lions. That'd be, that'd be interesting. Uh, Umang and Jensen looked all right. Goes, are, okay. goes all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. is there another New Zealand team he's eligible for that needs some help in the midfield? Okay, I'll get, look, off. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, but My who, mind's gone black. How about you, Carl? Who else uh, stood out to you from the performances in week one of the, the Bunnings? You got to. You set me up here, aren't you? You got to give a shout out to your boys. Oh, you, I mean, too. They're going to get mentioned very shortly, <laughs> one way or another. You can. Uh, that was a, a big, big win mm. uh, for the Turbos. Not only in score, but yeah, you know, first they were re- reasonably big outsiders, weren't they? 
Yeah, I think it was for, the line was four and a half. So they for were game one, so around that two dollar fifty mark at home. So mm. yeah, it was um, good good stuff by them. Uh, Taranaki, like we thought, mm. got off to a flyer, let the Hawks Bay back into it a little bit. It got a little bit edgy at the end there. Still managed uh, to get outside the one to twelve margin. Mm. Yeah, that um, that that late intercept try. I don't know who that winger was, um, but man, he was fast. Yeah, they got a few yeah, flyers down fast. There. Mm. Um, yeah, there all, were a few all. thirteen and overs. There were Tasman also thirteen plus against Bay Plenty on Sunday afternoon. The Boneyard, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, Wellington, uh, Waikato, Taranaki. Uh, it was only the was it the Auckland Canterbury game. Can, yeah, Canterbury. That looked like it was going to be thirteen plus for the majority. Early on, Canterbury, it did. Yeah, Canterbury did well to come mm, back there. Yeah. I was, and then uh, Auckland did well to hold on. Yeah, getting ready to make all sorts of jokes about Canterbury <laughs> having to watch out for relegation again. But yeah, now, yeah, just a couple of games in the 1 to 12 margin. But I think for me, I touched on it just there, but Tasman, but not maybe the, the score doesn't jump off the page when you look at it. But 27 14, pretty comfortable victory over Bay of Plenty and trying conditions in Tauranga. It's, no, it's not going to be an easy place to go and win throughout the season. Bay of Plenty are going to be a very solid side, but just the depth and strength they've got in their forward pack and then the. The halves as well, yeah. The, the, for me, what I saw from Tasman is that they're a team that are, are going to be physically dominate a lot of sides going forward, and they know that, and they can uh, switch it on and just rumble over teams when they need to. So they're probably a my standout team from from the, the round, and I'm yeah still pretty happy happy I've got them on side as my pick to win the whole thing. Are there either are you two reassessing any preseason predictions after what we saw in week one? Possibly. Ooh. Look, I. I like not. To, I'd like to take my RTS top try scorer call back straight away. Is that because <laughs> you don't think he's going to score enough, or because you think he's going to be scoring tries for another team? No, I don't think he's scoring enough. All right. And AJ Lamb's already got three <laughs> yeah. three try head start. True. <laughs> uh, even though Wellington were impressive, uh, I've been here before, um, <laughs> and they they always tend to throw in a couple of very very average performances uh, during the season to take themselves out of contention. Uh, I'm sort of, I actually quite like uh, the Mulu plus the points uh, this week uh, against Wellington. It would be pretty Wellington to, to you know, and uh, drop a game to. Yeah, like so, that. yeah, um, but I yeah I thought Tasman uh, were very very impressive, uh, in that when it's very it's never an easy uh, trip to go up to the Bay of Plenty and, and take the boys on there. So uh, they did very very well, um, and when they get back home. Uh, they'll be very, very hard to beat. And uh, even though Auckland are going down there, I, I give I give Tasman a big, big chance of yeah, that's, going two uh, from two. That sort of brings us on nicely to what I'd have to say is maybe the game game of the, the regular season almost. It's early, but week two, Tasman Pro- probable final. Perhaps. Yeah, I'm, I'm, could this decide where the home ground played? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I think it's probably. Come, maybe come a bit early in the season for Auckland. Just look, they uh, certainly look to have plenty about them against Canterbury on Sunday afternoon, but there were maybe just those little lapses here and there. And I think that's what will spell doom against T- Tasman. Yes, we saw in the Bay of Plenty game, you can't switch off even a minute against this Tasman team. They're so, so well drilled. And uh, with the news mid- midweek that Shannon Frizzell is going to be available for selection as well, that's made a already pretty imposing forward pack even more mm. stronger. It's, uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty keen on Tasman as just a very small favourite time. I think they're a dollar sixty seven and minus two and a half in the point start market. It sounds like both of you guys take the might minus. Be, yeah, on, on the same page. Yeah, I think so. Fins yeah. up on the podcast. Fins up. A few concerns. Uh, no fins up around. <laughs> yeah, like I said, Auckland switching off like they did against mm, Canterbury. Yeah, um, did well to hold on, but yeah, no, I'm uh, yeah pretty pretty excited about what we might see from Tasman there. Then, Shield challenge. Yeah, that was just uh, after that. Kicks off the. Uh, the are they still the Razorbacks? Or are they what? Targo Razorbacks. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Bring back Shaq the cat. <laughs> oh, how good. He was great. <laughs> <laughs> Me, yeah. Um, maybe maybe he'll be out there lifting the shield at McLean Park. At, no, he won't be. No. No one will be lifting the shield. Well, you, you won't lift it. It'll just be staying where it is. Okay. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Hawks Bay weren't exactly, you know, they weren't. They, they didn't look great. Yeah. <laughs> Give me Hawks Bay all day this weekend. All right. So whoever we wager on this, Paul, podcast wager. What are we putting on it? A curry? 
Yeah, we put a carry on it. Done. Done. Are you, uh, head to head, or uh, are you giving Cal the start? What do you mean? This no, it's for the shield. All right. Who wins the game? Fair enough. Yep, I'm yeah. happy to take the two forty. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first uh, official carry bet of the season. That's uh, exciting. I uh, yeah, I don't really have a strong opinion on this game. I kind of think Otago might have been playing with. It's weird to say you think Southland first week they would have been well up for it, but I think they might have had one eye on this. It's mm. you know. Hawks Bay not being quite as strong as they were last year, especially with just the absence of Falau Fakatava in particular. I think they might, you know, have the circle as a very good opportunity to get their hands back on the shield. Seems like they've, they've had it plenty in the recent years. Uh, yeah, uh, for one game at a time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, good. And yeah, the, the, the real reason I don't really wouldn't like to see a target up because I think Canterbury go down to the, the lunchbox a week later if you do win it. So. Yep, there's another one weaker. <laughs> yeah, we, we wouldn't. Do they? No, I might have spoken. I was sure Canterbury were lined up to get the next Shield Challenge. If uh... oh, round four. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're up, up in Northland. Two weeks later. Two weeks we'll later. Have two weeks. That's mm. all right. <laughs> Always good to get the head. <laughs> Mate, I, I would uh, do a lot for the Shield. Spend uh, ten days in Palmerston North. Yeah. And then if they hang on to it uh, against Canterbury, got Auckland the week after. Yeah, right. So, yeah, so no, I think it's gonna be tough scenes for yeah, the boys. Hopefully for for the good of the. Good of the provinces, Hawks back and hold on to it at least. God, they'd have to defend it four times in a row. Oh, tough scenes. When was the last time the green and white saw the shield? About 30, 13 years before I was born. Like late 60s, early 70s? Like late 70s it was. Wow. Yeah. Was that the uh, where were we, Mark Donaldson era? Yeah, there was a, yeah. The, 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 Frank Oliver was Frank Oliver. Yeah, Gary Knight, Bruce Samara. With um, the bucket heads around. Cowboy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think that might have even been pre Cowboy. It was a bit later. Yeah. There's always been a few bucket heads floating around Palmerston North. Not that I was uh, floating around Palmerston North those, those days. Uh, a few stories about those bucket heads. <laughs> I've heard that story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, back on track. Um, That's why they call it the bone yard. I think, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the odds would suggest those are probably going to be the two most competitive games of the weekend you've uh, already said you might think of waikato with a little bit of a bet as waikato plus the points yes outsiders um yep. any other favorites look vulnerable to you though uh i was gonna say canterbury but no uh, yeah yeah I think you'll find last time one or two went down to the garden city they uh t- took five points back to palmerston north with them uh north harbour oh, okay yeah, um, I know counties were disappointing against one or two. They didn't really get the chance to play this a style of game. They like, made a lot of silly mistakes. Like they did. It, it was a very they they looked dangerous. I was never super comfortable with the lead, even when it was out plus two converted tries. But they just kept they couldn't get their momentum going. They'd kick a ball dead. They just they'd go sideways and then drop the ball. They seemed to be wanting you know it was the old you win the game up front then go wide adage. They just weren't committing enough numbers to the breakdown to really get get the overlaps they needed to i thought counties they yeah they've had a week to have a look at that mm. and i'm sure they'll make a few adjustments uh come out better for that and so yeah well, i think they're a, a, ch- a chance at home against uh, harbour fair enough how about you carl any anyone you're putting an upset alert I blue and gold <laughs> i don't mind um well blue and gold yeah for sure uh but outside of that just having a wee look at the weather watch uh for Invercargill. On Sunday afternoon, even if they're not raining, so, someone will have rigged up some uh, irrigation to turn Rugby Park into a swimming pool. By fine with some high cloud. Yeah, okay. mm. yeah. well, that's how rain, Southland started but... the season last season. Mm. They um, played a couple of games down there in terrible conditions. Hawks, Hawks Bay, Bay down there yeah. in an absolute gale, from what I recall, and beat yeah. them. Yeah, beat them, and then Hawks Bay went on, got the shield, mm. and got promotion. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't mind the fourteen and a half there mm-hmm. uh, at home. They were. They were pretty good against. It didn't go away against um, Otago on the weekend. Yeah. They're certainly making strides. That, like from where they were a couple of years oh, ago. Yeah. Last year they were very competitive throughout the yeah. season. Um, and yeah, I think they've they've got add maybe a little bit more flair or top end talent this season once again. Yep, mm. Marty Banks kicking goals mm. from all over the park. So there. Yeah. As long as he wasn't on the spates all week, yeah, yeah, it should be. <laughs> but yeah, I think I expect to see them put up a bit of a fight. Um, that's one actually we'll get to it in our best bets but obviously uh mpc bonus back is running on all seven games again this weekend yes it is paul it is uh, 
Do you want to give the punters the details there? Oh, sure. Uh, place a pre-match winning team and margin bet. Uh, and if your team wins, but you uh, pick the incorrect margin, uh, so let's say you take uh, mana or two to win by 12 and under against Canterbury, and they win, but they win by 13 and over, uh, then we'll give you your stake back. For example. As a bonus bet, up to $30. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you want okay? Sorry. Uh, say so you take Hawks Bay to win by twelve and under against Otago, for example, <laughs> on Saturday, and they win by thirteen and over. Well, then mm. we'll give you your stake back up to thirty dollars <laughs> as a bonus bet. So yeah, that's on all NPC games in week two. Uh, it's the winning team in margin, and it's the twelve and under thirteen and over winning team in margin. Mm, yeah, and I was right. just going to say I thought Bay of Plenty one to twelve at three dollars fifty might be worth a little look in that particular game mm. with that bonus back in play because. I would still be surprised if Southland managed to get the win as five dollars twenty underdogs, but with that little bit of extra insurance, the three dollars fifty, uh, yeah, probably probably worth a little nibble there. Fourteen point one, everyone wins. There we go. Well, Twelve <laughs> points might be better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, but we'll get to a, it's time to get to our best bets of the week. Uh, it's a, that that time of you know, uh, I've got I've opened this up to all the games, rugby championship, uh, Bunnings NPC. Um, National Barbarians Cup, if you want to get involved with that, though I don't think any markets are available at the time of recording. Uh, what's your best bet for, for this weekend's rugby, Paul? Hawks Bay, head-to-head, dollar fifty-one. Did you just write that down five minutes ago? Well, why would I need <laughs> to write it down? It's obvious. All right. What's yours, Cal? Uh, I'm going to the All Blacks here. This is my one and only AB's bet. Uh, the halftime point start, ten and a half. I'll take the ABs oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. at dollar eighty-five. Yeah. yeah, after what we saw last week. It, uh, yep. I'm going uh, Argentina plus nine and a half. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Pumas and what what they've done over the last couple of years. And I think we've seen you can't you can't afford to be resting as many blokes as South Africa are. It's, they're obviously still world champions, but it's not not their first choice team. So Argentinians will uh, keep that close against them. Uh, you got a bit of value for us, Cal? Value. Targo, one to 12, 375. Ooh. <laughs> I'm guessing you're not in agreement there, Paul. No, I'm not. What's your value bet of the week? Well, I was going to go in that Hawks same Bay game. So yeah. plus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll steer, I'll steer uh, away from that. Um, I'll take Tasman, 13 and over against Auckland. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, A lot, lot of uh, NPC bonus back possibilities opening up there as well. Indeed. I'm uh, back to the rugby championship for this one, though. I'm going the uh, winning team in margin, 10-point market for the All Blacks game. 11 to 20? No, um, actually, just as a pure value play, I'm taking the 31 to 40 at 550. Look, I, mm. I've said, I think, you know, just probably lean towards the plus, but there's definitely that that aspect in play where the, the All Blacks do just play regularly. Yeah, yeah. Where, where it gets in that, in that 550. I think that's... Uh, that's a great little value bet there. It's a bit, a bit less stressful of a watch as well as being, being on the plus. So really like the, the 550 available there. Um, what about a multi-anchor, Paul? Uh, this is usually your area of expertise. <laughs> who's, who's running through all your multis this week and why is it Hawks Bay? Well, it is Hawks Bay. It's way too much value for Paul's Right, so you're best bet in your multi No, no. Thing. You forced me to take that. Don't worry about it. I'll move on. <laughs> I'm going to go with... I can't, I can't, I can't do it. But I'm going to go Manawatu plus the points. That's my an- multi-anchor. Manawatu plus the points. Wow. It's a, it's a great bet. Look, I'm uh, not going to argue with you there at all. 24 and a half. It just, uh, it's like the bookies didn't watch Friday night. No respect. Yeah, no respect. <laughs> How about you, Carl? Who's your uh, anchor? I've got Taranaki head-to-head at $1.29. That's uh, also what I've got written down just after. Yeah, don't think anyone was, was walking away from the cake tin on Saturday afternoon too concerned about Northland, especially defensively. I think mm-hmm. Taranaki will uh, yeah, run rings around them, uh, uh, even though it is up at Seminoff Stadium. Uh, how about an underdog for, for the punters? Is someone with a bit of value? What's your best underdog of the week, Paul? Uh, County's Monocal. Friday night, yep. I, I think they'll, as you uh, said, they made a lot of errors. Uh, in that game last weekend, uh, ha- had a few days to look at it, correct things back home. Uh, I think they're a chance. Yeah, yeah. North Harbour weren't exactly impressive and suffering a big loss to Waikato. No stuff either. So, Carl, who, what underdog you like the look of? Do you need to ask? Oh, well, gee. yeah, man or two, right? Otago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be quite as. Uh... Ash Dixon will not let me down. 
<laughs> I know that. Well, you know, he's, he's got a bit, a bit of his heart lies down south, maybe. No, nah, of course not. Say it to his face. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I reckon I could uh, get away from it now. Um, I'm not no, you couldn't. be quite as one-eyed as uh, Carl, but, you know, if anyone did want to take the $10 and off of Mano or two to get another win in Canterbury, I wouldn't talk you out of it, but I uh, just like my best bet. I really like the Pumas that uh, more than three dollars to sneak up on the uh, sp- the hungover Springboks. Not necessarily. I, I imagine there were a few Castle Lagers drunk after they uh, got over the top in the Castle Lager Lion series. Yeah. So yeah, they might be hungover in more ways than one. I reckon the Pumas are a real chance to uh, steal a steal a win there. Uh, we've already touched on a few of these, so this might be a repeat. But if uh, you're having one NPC bonus bet. Bonus back bet for the week. What would it be? Tasman 13 and over. What so? Car. I've got Taranaki 13 plus. Mm, nice one. 10. Yeah. I've uh, got the Bay of Plenty 350, which I touched on before down there as well. But uh Canterbury one to twelve at four fifty as well. Not probably not mm. a not a crazy uh little bit there as well. Obviously if they're a dollar three, so the bookies certainly think they're highly likely to win that. But if the turbos can keep it close, four fifty looks like a bit of value. Um, another promo running this week as well, just to finish things off. The same game claim, obviously, on uh, the Blenders Low Cup game and Eden Park pool. Just give the punters a refresher on same game claim. Yep, same game claim. Just place a four or more leg same game multi on the Blenders Low Cup test this weekend and get a refund up to $50 as a bonus bet if your multi, your same game multi, loses by one leg. So, uh, same game multi betting not available just yet, but should be up. I think. Should be for probably tomorrow mm-hmm. early afternoon. Yeah. And who will you be Friday uh, early yeah, afternoon? That's the one, yeah. Who will be uh, you checking in your uh, selections once it is up? Uh, I'm gonna take the Australian's plus mm-hmm. the what was it again? 22 and a half. That's the one, Australia plus 22 and a half. Uh, I'll have New Zealand to lead at half time, uh, and I'll have uh, here. New Zealand won't score many tries because it won't get out to the four quarters. So you can just see the cogs ticking over. And yeah, who is going to score a try for the? Yeah, it'll be Artie Severe. Ah, yeah, that's three yeah. leagues. I don't mind that. Three and there's a free square. Taniella two. Uh, Taniella two. Oh, oh, no, oh wow! Not the free square I was talking about. We're not sure what the odds are, but probably up around. Yeah. The That'd 50, be great. Fifty dollars, mate. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how about you, Carl? Are you? Uh... Uh, I will go. ABs with the halftime point start, uh, ABs to win, and the two wingers, uh, Sever Reese and Will Jordan, to cross the line. Yeah, I'm uh, similar to you. I'm going to sort of where you can you sort of bet against your own outcomes to maybe raise the price a little bit here. I think yeah, Sever Reese and Will Jordan will be both gun and uh, in my same game multi, and I imagine ninety percent of the same game multi is placed on. Mm. It. You'd be very surprised seeing them not down. Then also going to go with David Havili, anytime try scorer. It was a uh, Got across the line again on did. Very good try. two of his last three tests. I think he, he's a bit of value, but yeah, I wouldn't talk you out of any of the loose forwards either for that third try scorer, Adi or Nakiri Iwane. The Wallabies did look pretty vulnerable around the flanks of the ruck there, but I, I'm going with Avili, and then I'll take Australia plus 30, 30 and a half with a little alternate point start. I think yeah, that'll add nice. You've got the three all-black try scorers and a Wallabies point start there. That'll add in nicely at the price. So that's, nice. that's what I'll be doing. Uh, yeah, should be a good test at Eden Park on Saturday evening. Hopefully, when the last one in New Zealand for a while. Yeah, hopefully when we're back, we uh, can celebrate the Blenders Low being one thing that doesn't head across the Tasman in two weeks' time. <laughs> Fingers yeah. crossed, yeah. Um, but we will be uh, back again next week in some way, shape, or form to recap all the all the rugby from the weekend. And it might be a uh, you know go, going all in on the Bunnings NPC because uh, no no test footy next weekend. So yeah. Um, yeah, should, should be another exciting podcast. We'll be uh, back probably next Thursday. Do it all again. Thank you for joining me, fellas. Thank you, Pat. Good luck on the punt this weekend, and uh, good luck to all of you out there. See you next week. Go Otago. <laughs> <laughs>